You know, we all grew up with the famous story of Pocahontas and John Smith, and uh, that, honestly, it's a wonderful story. We grew up with that in elementary school, middle school, high school, but there's another fantastic, great story. In fact, this is one of my favorite stories of American history, and that is of Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea. And most likely you were all were taught this story in class as well. Um, but I feel like this story doesn't get as much play as Pocahontas and John Smith. And that is the subject of tonight's film. Tonight's film is The Far Horizons, and it came out in 1955. It was a Paramount pr production, and it's so interesting that this is the only, the first and only Hollywood production full-out movie based on the Lewis and Clark expedition. There's been lots of miniseries, lots of documentaries based on Lewis and Clark, but this is the only like Hollywood production ever on it. And honestly, I think it's way overdue for us to make a new and historically accurate one because uh, let's just say that this movie was not exactly historically accurate. Uh, but, you know, when you watch old movies that are based on uh, history, you cannot let um, historical accuracy get in the way of your enjoyment of the movies. If you do that, then you're just going to be nitpicking at every single little thing and you'll just hate the whole thing. So when you watch these historical films, uh, films based on historical events, of course, you can have in the back of your mind, oh, it probably wasn't like that. But, you know, take it for what it is. It's a movie. It's a story. Uh, it's there for us to be entertained. And I was entertained with this movie. So this was directed by Rudolf Matei. And uh, I would classify as a historical romance movie and definitely an, ad an adventure film. This is the, ad honestly, this is the American adventure uh, of us purchasing the Louisiana Purchase uh, and sending Lewis and Clark and having Sacagawea help them on their journey. I just love this story. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, it has Fred McMurray in this as Captain Meriwether Lewis. Uh, honestly, I think he was wrongly casted. When I think of Fred McMurray, I think of a man in a suit, basically uh, film noir type pictures or even comedies. Or I don't picture him in the adventure period dramas. Uh, and we have Charlton Heston as Lieutenant William Clark. Uh, he was awesome. Honestly, he was perfectly casted. Um, and we have Donna Reed as Sacagawea. Now, obviously, she's not a Native American. She wasn't a Native American. They put makeup on her to appear like she would be a Native American. Um, as I mentioned earlier, personally, I don't let that get in the way of ruining a picture because this was made in a different time. So just take this movie. Um, it's Take it for what it is. It's, it's a movie. It's a story. Um, honestly, obviously... They, if they had had a real Native American woman play Sacagawea, it would have made the movie so much better. But I think Donna Reed did a fairly good job with what she was given. And uh, let's see. We also have Barbara Hale as Julia Hancock. And she plays sort of the, the woman, the love interest who sparks this love triangle drama between <laughs> Lewis and Clark. Now, again, I don't know how accurate that, obviously, I think that was all completely made up. Um, so let's get a little bit more into the plot. Of course, from history class, we know uh, 1803, Thomas Jefferson purchased uh, the Louisiana Territory from the France, from France. And he told Lewis and Clark, uh, first he told uh, Lewis that he wanted him to explore the area, and Lewis had his buddy Clark attend him uh, on this expedition to look for new plants, new animals. But the main objective of this mission was to take waterways, such as the Missouri River, west. And the purpose was it went up northwest 
but the main purpose was to find a waterway in which they could connect to the Pacific Ocean so that the American government could claim the California total west area for America because it was unclaimed territory. So we, that's the historical setup that most of us Americans at least are familiar with. Um, now, I had seen bits and pieces of this movie back when I was in undergrad, and I liked the scenes that I had seen. The scene that stuck with me was there's a scene where they have to break down their riverboat in order to get it over a waterfall. And that scene always stuck with me because it's just so intense. Uh, and also what stuck with me is just the beautiful Technicolor. Uh, this is one of those beautifully colored films uh, in, from the 1950s where we see beautiful landscapes of, because they filmed this on, on scene. I believe they filmed this in uh, Wyoming. And beautiful shots of the river and later of the mountains. I love it. So the setting is awesome for this movie. Um, so right away, there's an awkward start because <laughs> uh, the character that Barbara Hale plays, uh, Julia, she uh, she's at first in love with uh, Meriwether Lewis, but he's so busy uh, that and then she meets Clark. Uh, and overnight, she and um, William Clark apparently fell in love. And the next morning, uh, Lewis comes over and he's like basically wanting to propose, but he's too late because she's accepted and she's fallen in love with uh, William Clark just so fast. So I, I, right away, there's like some resentment towards Lewis and Clark. So I'm like, what the heck? This is like when I think of Lewis and Clark, I think of a strong brotherhood. These guys did the impossible together. But no, there's an awkward love triangle. But uh, Lewis says, I'm not going to let this get in the way. I'm a professional man, and we're going we're gonna to get through this together. <laughs> so there's a riverboat, and I love the riverboat because there's a lot of scenes with it, beautiful shots of them going on this adventure. And I'll note that uh, in my last Thanksgiving review of Hudson's Bay, uh, I talked about how when I look for Thanksgiving reviews, I really look for movies where we see Native Americans, uh, Indians, working side by side with people from the West, people from Europe, Americans. I love seeing movies where they work together. Uh, they're not fighting uh, because, of course, Native Americans and um, Europeans and Americans, of course, they had horrible uh, wars with each other, fighting, but there were beautiful moments of them working together, such as in this um, with Sacagawea. So I'll, I'll note that the scenes with the tribes, they're decent. Um, some of them are extremely stereotypical, but I thought it was interesting uh, how Sacagawea in this was, she was at first a slave to another tribe and it, it, the, at least they separated her clothing was different from the tribe in which she was a slave to. And the whole time I was wondering if the clothing uh, for Sacagawea was at least historically accurate to what Sacagawea would have actually been wearing at the time. So if you know that, if you know the answer to that, I would love if you would post that down below because I love learning about Native American history. Um, so right away uh, we kind of get some hints that she and Clark Charlton Heston's character are sort of flirting and I'm like but isn't he engaged to Julia anyway there's a dramatic scene in which uh, she escapes her the tribe that has her as a slave because she wants to warn Lewis and Clark that this tribe is actually bad and they're planning on killing uh, Lewis and Clark and everyone on their expedition they're planning on murdering them so she gets to them in a dramatic fashion um, and she warns them and of course they're saved and then they continue their expedition to the west and Sacagawea she knows the lands because she's from another tribe out west so she says I can guide you um, so basically 
um, along the way we see some flirting between uh, Clark and uh, Sacagawea of course this is all pretty much all fiction in fact uh, Sacagawea she was married to a Frenchman or I don't know if she was married but she had a child with a Frenchman and the Frenchman is represented in the movie but he's represented as an awful despicable man uh, his name was Toussaint uh, Char Charbonneau don't judge my French please but uh, so she was married to him to this Frenchman but in the movie <clears throat> the Frenchman was awful uh, but they just totally threw that off the window we want Sacagawea to be in love with Clark uh, with uh, <laughs> with William Clark so remember don't let that just just totally destroy the film because this is a story it's a fictional story based on a true story um and i'll note there's such a funny like kind of soap opera part because we start feeling friction between lewis and clark even more uh in fact uh there's a scene where where i think lewis asks clark he says fred mcmurray asks charlton heston he says what did you name that fork in the river and he says no, 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 no. The other way around. Charlton Hessen asked Fred McMurray, what did you name the uh, the fork in the river? And Fred McMurray says, I named it Julia. What did you name it? And uh, Charlton Hessen says, Sacagawea. So it's like, <laughs> apparently Charlton Hessen's mind is on Sacagawea, on Donna Reed. He has forgotten Julia, but uh, <laughs> poor... Fred McMurray, Lewis, he is still, he can't get over Julia. So that angers Fred McMurray so much because it's like, dude, you took my woman and yet you're like, you got your sights on another uh, woman. So there's just so much soap opera drama between Lewis and Clark, which honestly hurt the my overall liking of the movie so much because, again, where's the brotherhood between Lewis and Clark? Um, honestly, this movie could have been named Clark and Sacagawea because the film is basically, for the most part, centered on their relationship. Um, so, like I said, a scene that always stuck with me was when they, when they were pushing the, the riverboat over this great mountain. Uh, they basically had to break it into parts and push it. Such an awesome scene. Um my biggest complaint with the movie is that there was so much drama between Lewis and Clark that it just the whole time you're waiting okay when are they going to make up when are they going to be brothers again and friends but that essentially never happened in fact there's a scene I'll, I'll get to this scene in a minute but I want to note this scene where Fred McMurray basically is like look we're not equals anymore I'm in charge you need to get rid of Sacagawea. She is not coming with us anymore. And so there's this really sad scene where Sacagawea, she's Donna Reed, she's running at the side of the boat. And uh, Charlton Henson's like, dude, are you, are you going to let her just keep running and chasing to be with me? And F Fred McMurray's just very unlikable at this point. And then she trips and falls and Charlton Heston runs to her and grabs her. And anyway, eventually Charlton Heston gets in some sort of marriage with her through the tribes. And I feel like Sacagawea was the victim in this because it was like she was being s sort of strung along by Clark. Um, the more I think about it, but there's this big fight towards the end before they get to the Pacific, we all know they get to that. But there's this big fight with between uh, Lewis and Clark, and Clark punches him in the face. And then um, one of their soldiers, uh, one of the head guys on their expedition says, look, since you guys are acting like kids, I'm going to tell you there's men on this expedition, good men dying, and you both are here fighting over uh, women. So you need you both need to man up and we need to be men and we need to keep pushing this expedition. And I was like, okay, finally, Lewis and Clark, they're going to be buddies again. They're going to see that there shouldn't be drama between them. 
I was wrong. They still, Lewis is still like, I'm writing you up and you're going to be sanctioned when we get back to the White House. And it's just like, there's no brotherhood between them, which I hated about this film. Um, it's a big complaint, honestly. And when they eventually do reach the Pacific Ocean, extremely unclimactic. You expect like beautiful shots of the Pacific and just amazing. Like we we did something incredible for the for the United States of America, but none of that. It's like they put up a flag. And they're like, okay, let's get back. So crummy, in my opinion. When they eventually get back to the White House. I, I was so nervous for Sacagawea because she comes back and it's like, please, I hope, you know, at this point, it's like, forget history. And you're like, please, I hope they actually end up together. I hope uh, Clark and Sacagawea can get married. There's this super awkward scene between Sacagawea and Julia. And Sacagawea realizes, you know, this is not my culture. I will not fit in here. And it's sad because she thinks I, I can't be a good wife for uh, William Clark. So I'm going to leave him and go back to my people. And this is how they explain that in reality, they didn't actually end up together, but there was a secret love between them. So she goes home and uh, William Clark is sad. And of course, Fred McMurray, he doesn't actually report uh, Clark's uh, misconduct to the president. Um, so it's sort of a sad ending. Um, I'll note that uh, in terms of history for the film uh, that John Wayne and uh, Gary Cooper were apparently asked to be in the picture. Both of them turned it down. Um, I do, it's, and another sad thing I'll note is I have this journal that was written by, it's this journal by Charlton Heston that he would keep between 1956 and 76. This movie was made in 1955, so we don't get anything from Charlton Heston on the film. So sad. Because I would love to hear what his thoughts were on it. I have one picture, only one, from this book. There's Charlton Heston as William Clark. I'm going to give this movie a two and a half stars. You know, it's nothing crazy good. Really focus on the adventure. Don't let the historical <laughs> falsehoods ruin the film. Uh, it is a good movie. I'll probably see it again one day. Um, probably give it like 15 years, 20 years to watch this again. But it's a great Thanksgiving time. You know, like I said, Native Americans working with... Uh, uh, Americans, Europeans. That's what I love to see. It, it really was a beautiful thing. And um, I'll also note that every time I'd gone to St. Louis, they're at the Arch when I was growing up, they would show this amazing documentary film about uh, Lewis and Clark's expedition with Sacagawea. And that is an excellent film to watch. Uh, I wish I knew the name of it. Uh, if any of you are know, know the documentary I'm talking about, please post that below because I would love to watch that again. That was such an excellent portrayal of the expedition. Um, but the Far Horizons, it's worth a watch. And uh, we're getting closer to Thanksgiving, Turkey Day. I may have one more Thanksgiving review for you all. Uh, I hope you all enjoy these types of reviews. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.